Hey everyone, it's Blake here from ChessPathways.com, and in today's openings video, we'll be discussing the smith mora Gambit. The smith mora Gambit is one of White's popular options to play against the Sicilian defense, so the game is going to start with e4, c5, and now White's going to play pawn to d4 here. Often this move is played in the Sicilian to try to open up the center after White plays knight's f3. Here White plays it without preparing at first, and they intend to meet c takes d4, not with the recapture here, but with a pawn sacrifice. White's going to play c3 and offer black the chance to win a pawn here by taking this pawn. Of course, like most gambits, black has the option to either accept it or decline it. Let's first start by taking a look at the smith mora gambit accepted. Black's going to take here on c3, and white takes back with the knight. So what does white have here for the sacrificed pawn? We see that black is up a pawn, but in return, white has a space advantage, white has a slight lead in development, and white is going to try to use some pressure down the semi-open C and D files to, uh, to put some pressure on the black position. So let's take a look at how the game can go. Black has a couple different setups to choose from to try to neutralize white's space advantage and lead in development. Let's take a look. Knight C6 is their most popular move here, just developing a piece. White can play knight to F3, black can play D6, trying to open up a bishop. Uh, white usually plays bishop c4, putting this bishop on its most active square, taking aim at this f7 pawn. And one of the points of this gambit is that black has to be a little bit careful of playing knight f6 too early. That would certainly be a desirable move to play, but for example here, if black plays knight to f6, you're always in danger of getting hit by this pawn break, pawn to e5. I'll just show what can happen here. If black takes on e5, now black's up two pawns. And they even get to exchange queens after queen takes d8, knight takes d8. But white just has such a big lead in development here. White can play knight to b5, and it's really not so simple to stop all of white's threats here. White's threatening to fork the king and rook. Black can try to play rook to b8, but now white can recapture the e-pawn and threaten the f7 square if this knight moves. Knight c7 checkmate is now also a threat because d7 has been taken away from the king. And this can be very dangerous for black to play. Even the a-pawn is hanging as well. So black usually wants to hold off there from playing knight f6 too early. They can meet bishop c4 with e6, kind of getting the same pawn formation you might see in the Scheveningen variation of the Sicilian. These pawns just hold back for now, controlling all the squares here in the center. And after white castles, now black is finally ready to play knight to f6, because e5 won't be as effective now. Uh, playing this move e6 helps a lot for black. So you might see queen to e2, just vacating the d-file, getting ready to bring a rook to d1. Bishop to e7, rook d1, white's trying to put some pressure on this backwards d6 pawn and possibly even renew the threat to play e5, making use of the pins here on the file. One way black can handle this is to play e5 themselves, and one line here continues bishop e3, castles, h3, just stopping knight g4 or bishop g4. Bishop e6, black can accept these doubled pawns just trying to get rid of this strong bishop, but of course that is somewhat of a concession. Bishop takes e6, f takes e6, rook a to c1. We see, just like I mentioned, the rooks show up on the c and d files, putting a lot of pressure on black. And if black plays here rook to c8, that looks like a very natural move. Uh, a very nice idea here from white is to play b4. White's trying to expand on the queen side, thinking about kicking this knight away and maybe even winning the a7 pawn in some lines. And if the pawn is taken, white has a couple options here. Knight takes e5 is now possible, making use of the d-file pressure. Uh, queen b5 has been played in this position, where the b-pawn's under attack, the knight's under attack, the e5-pawn's still hanging. White's getting some pretty good play here. Coming back here to move 5, we looked at black's idea to simply play d6 and e6. Another popular setup from black is to play e6 here, intending to play a6 just to keep the knight out of the b5 square. And a lot of times, black is going to play knight to e7 and knight to g6. They just want to avoid putting that knight on the f6 square, avoid getting hit by e5, and try to finish up their development this way. So here, you might see bishop c4, a6, castles, knight g to e7. Black's just implementing that plan I talked about. And if white plays here bishop g5, trying to pin this knight, white's trying to trip black up a little bit here on the king side, trying to make it harder for them to finish their development here. Uh, the knight can't move, and it's hard to dislodge this bishop without possibly weakening the king side a little bit with h6 or f6. But black can actually play f6 here. It's not as weakening as it looks. And we might see something like now bishop e3, b5, bishop b3, now the knight can come to g6. 
And black has actually scored pretty well from this position. Really the onus is on white here to prove they have something, because if they don't and black can just finish up their development, then black is going to just be left with an extra pawn here. So white needs to find something to do. I think knight d4 is the best chance from white, possibly trying to play f4 and maybe even f5 in some lines, trying to open up some lines there before black can catch up in development. Black can play here bishop to b7, and here white has tried queen h5, just pinning this knight, possibly preparing f4, f5 soon. Uh, white has tried playing f4 right away, but then black gets to play bishop to c5. Uh, what I think might be the best chance here for white is to play knight takes c6 first, and then after bishop takes c6, now playing f4, because now there's no more bishop to c5. Of course, it looks like a b4 could be a problem here, kicking this knight away and trying to win this loose e4 pawn. But now we're going to see another one of white's very thematic ideas here in the smith Moore gambit, and that is to play knight to d5. Just going forward with that knight, uh, sacrificing it to try to open some lines here, and it's actually not good at all here for black if they accept this knight sacrifice. After e takes d5, e takes d5, surprisingly the e-file here is almost fatal for black. Even though it looks like black has a couple moves to get out of the threats, it's really not so easy. For example, if uh, black simply saves the bishop now and plays bishop b5, simply rook to e1. And now what does black really do? You can't really play king f7 because of d6 unleashing this powerful bishop, and uh, what else can you really do here? If you play bishop to e7, you're going to get hit with pawn to d6. And black is really in huge trouble here. They were simply too slow to get castled. By the way, oftentimes you might see this knight to d5 tactic work after your rook's already on c1, and black has put their queen on the c file, and it can work out to open up the c file as well. So always keep an eye out for knight to d5 in the smith mora, even when it sacrifices a piece. I'll show one more possibility here to defend against the smith mora. Uh, we've looked at d6 and e6, we've looked at playing the a6 and e6 line, bringing the knight to the g6 square. Let's take a look at the Fianchetto defense, where black simply plays d6 and tries to bring this bishop to the g7 square. This isn't black's most popular defense, but it can be pretty effective, and I'm going to show a game now where black did succeed in defending the smith mora, and they got a clearly better position in the middle game, just simply being up a pawn. So in this game we saw bishop to c4, bishop g7, castles, d6, Queen e2, now black plays knight to f6, h3, castle, rook d1, all very normal smith mora moves, and here black chose to play knight to d7, just trying to get out of the way of any e5 advance once again, and black has really good control now of this e5 square, they have four pieces that control that square. So white tried bishop g5, uh, just developing that bishop, and possibly thinking about playing knight to d5, uh, getting some pressure here on the e7 pawn, Black responded with h6, not being afraid to move that pawn next to the king, trying to kick that bishop away. Bishop h4, the knight comes around to b6, attacking uh, white's bishop here on c4. Now white plays bishop b3 to retreat that bishop, and black plays bishop e6 to finish up their minor piece development. Again, not really being afraid of these doubled pawns, because after bishop takes e6, f takes e6, uh, this rook would now have an active file here on the f file, uh, black would increase their control of the center here with this f pawn moving to e6. So white decided not to do that. White played knight to d5. Again, this key move trying to open up some files. Uh, it would not be a good idea, for example, for black to play knight takes d5, of course, because then e takes d5 would fork the knight and bishop. But there's no need for black to do that. After knight d5, black just calmly added some defense here to the e7 pawn by playing rook to e8. Uh, and now we saw a3. We get the sense that maybe white's uh, kind of out of ideas here. They might want to be playing b4 and b5, but it might be a little bit too slow. Black's just about done with their development. The game continued rook to c8, bishop a2, queen d7, rook a to c1, and finally black decided to exchange here on d5, uh, because now they can play bishop takes d5 and meet e takes d5 with knight to d4. This is a very nice tactical solution. White does have uh, two attackers here and black only has one defender. But white's going to be too slow to try to win a piece here because uh, black can always deflect the rook away with rook takes c1. And if white tries to exchange rooks first, of course they can't do that because their queen is hanging here. So black has really solved all their opening problems, and black is just up a clean extra pawn here. It's not so clear if white has any compensation for it anymore. So after e4, c5, d4, c takes d4, and c3, we've taken a look at what can happen if black accepts the smith Moore gambit, now let's talk about what if black wants to decline this gambit. What can black do here? It turns out that most of black's attempts to decline this gambit actually just transpose to other opening systems. 
For example, knight f6 is a very popular move here. Uh, now if white were to take on d4, black would just win the e4 pawn, and black would still be up a pawn. So here white will usually want to push this pawn to e5 before taking back the pawn here on d4. But this is simply one of the main lines of the Alapin variation of the Sicilian. Just to show the move order, this would be after e4, c5, c3 here on move 2. Black could play knight f6, and we would see e5, knight d5, d4, c takes d4, c takes d4, and we get the exact same position. Also, after c3 here, instead of accepting the gambit, black could play g6 here, trying to fianchetto this bishop. And now after c takes d4, black has to be careful to make sure white doesn't just get free reign here in the center. It would not be good, for example, to play knight c6 and start letting white kick your knights around. But black can simply strike at the center now with d5. And after e takes d5, play knight to f6, not recapturing with the queen because you can just recapture with the knight here in most cases. And now we are suddenly in a line of the Karo Khan defense. Just to show that one, that would be after e4, c6, d4, d5, e takes d5, c takes d5, c4, the Panov attack, and now knight to f6, c takes d5, and black could simply delay recapturing here for a turn and play g6, and we end up in the exact same position as you can get out of the smith Mora gambit declined. Also after c3, d5 is another popular move to decline the gambit, this also leads back to an Alapin variation of the Sicilian, after e takes d5, queen takes d5, c takes d4, and knight c6. And really the only move that leads to an original position, after c3, is if black pushes this pawn, black can play here pawn to d3. And this looks a bit strange, you're just kind of helping white to develop a bishop here with bishop takes d3, but the point is you make sure that this pawn remains here on c3, you make sure it's taking away the best square from this knight, and black can now just play knight to c6. This is sometimes called the push variation, because you push this pawn to d3, and it's probably not as good as a lot of those other options to decline the gambit, because you are giving white kind of a free development tempo here, but it is good to remember this option exists. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please make sure you click the link down in the description to visit chesspathways.com and get signed up there. It's totally free, only takes five seconds to join, and I will send you a free move-by-move -move guide to chess thinking when you do. So I look forward to seeing you in our community and helping you become the best chess player you can be. Thanks, and I'll see you there.